All right, good evening. At this time, I'd like the council for a motion to come out of executive session. All right, Councilman Waltz and Councilman Price. I have the motion and the second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. And with that, we'd call the meeting to order at this time. Welcome to the August 28th meeting of your Aiken City Council. We appreciate you being here. We'll open with our invocation and our pledge. If you're so inclined, please feel free to rise for the invocation. Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for this time. We're thankful for this city that we have the honor of serving. Father, in this meeting, as we tend to the business of our city, we ask for wisdom, we ask for guidance. We pray that you would protect those who provide service to our city, those men and women of public safety, police, fire. We ask for protection for all those who provide other services, Lord, who deal with our public, who provide the services that they count on to increase the quality of life in our city. We just ask your blessings and protection upon all those who are here. In your name we pray. Amen. Chief, good evening. Can you lead us in our pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief Branco. We'd like to go over the guidelines for our meetings at this time. Meetings are a public forum in which many opinions are expressed and the business of the city must be conducted. As such, discipline, honorable, and professional decorum is paramount. Courteous, respectful communication is expected. During the non-agenda items from the public portion of the agenda, speakers will be given three minutes to address council about city issues that they are concerned about. The total time of this agenda item is not to exceed 30 minutes. During the public hearing portion of the agenda item, all questions and statements from the public shall be directed to the chair. If you wish to speak, raise your hand and I will certainly recognize you. Please approach the podium and state your name and address. Speakers should limit their comments to the subject being discussed. Each speaker will be given five minutes during that, that item agenda, uh, on that item to address the issue and may only address the issue once unless questions from council are posed to the speaker. And with that, we move down to additions and deletions to the agenda, and I recognize Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Waltz. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have no additions or deletions to the agenda tonight, so I will make a motion that we accept the agenda as presented. Okay, very good. We have a motion. Is there a second? I so move. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. All those in favor of the agenda as presented, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> the minutes were given to council for their review before our meeting. At this time, I'd entertain a motion for the acceptance of the minutes. Second. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Price. Or, yeah. Councilwoman Price made the motion. Is there a second? I second. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. All those in favor of the minutes as presented, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. We move now down to presentations. Um, and our, I'm number one is a presentation from Partners in Friendship regarding Orvieta, Italy, and I'll recognize our city manager at this time. Thank you. We have tonight a uh, presentation um, regarding Partners in Friendship, our sister community in Italy, Orvieto. We have tonight um, three representatives, Liz, Bit Liz Benton, uh, Claudio Cornali and Francesca Pataro, and they would like to present uh, to the mayor and council a gift from the mayor and council of Orvieto. Mrs. Pataro recently traveled to Orvieto with a group of students from Aiken High School and visited with elected officials while there. Good evening. Can you hear me now? We can hear you perfect, yes Good evening, I am Elizabeth Benton with Partners in Friendship and with me are Francesca Patera and Claudio Cognali, both of whom have visited with the um, Comune in Orvieto. 
I think there's one person on this council who is familiar with partners in friendship, and that is Leslie Price, who worked with Fred Cavanaugh. So I want to tell you briefly just a little bit about partners in friendship and some of the activities which have taken place since the partnership was formed. Members of Rotary and others in Aiken met with city council members in 1976 to um, talk about the idea of a partner city. We call it a partner city rather than a sister city. And in 1997, a delegation went to Orvieto to formalize the partnership. The delegation was led by Mayor Fred Cavanaugh, who was representing the city. But I want you to know that there were other community members involved. There was a representative from the Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Development Association, Sunrise Rotary Club, USCA, and I represented Aiken County Public Schools as the education representative. We were hosted by the city of Orvieto, and in November of that same year, a delegation from Orvieto came to, it, to Aiken, and Aiken played host for a few days to them. We have been involved in a number of activities since the organization became official, and I'm going to highlight just a few briefly so that you will have some understanding of what we are and what we do. PIF has sponsored, as you heard from Mr. Biedenbaugh, high school student exchanges with Orvieto since 1977. That is until COVID reared its head. Aiken students go to Orvieto and stay in the homes with students in Orvieto mm -hmm. in odd years. And Orvieto students come to Aiken in odd years and they stay with our students Mary Tilton's daughter went this past year, so next year she will be hosting a student from Orvieto. Francesca Patero has led the student exchanges for 17 years, but she's retiring this year. She is a retired Aiken High teacher. The Italian artist Livio Valentini served as an artist in residence at USC Aiken on several occasions. We also had, as visiting professors, archaeologists from Orvieto. Doctors Claudio and Alba Bizzari have been on two occasions. PIF has endowed a scholarship at USCA for students to go to Orvieto to participate in archeological digs. You may not know this, but Orvieto is a former Etruscan city until the Romans took it over many years ago. USCA students have interned in a large technology company in Orvieto and several PIF members have led tours of Orvieto and the surrounding areas for Aikenites. Two runners, two years have seen Aiken runners participate in 11 kilometer races in Orvieto, and that's up and down hills, so that was a challenge for them. Valentini art has been exhibited in Aiken, and two Aikenites, Leslie Alexander, and the late Al Beyer participated in a joint art exhibit with Valentini in Orvieto. PIF has brought Italian chefs from Aiken, from, excuse me, from Orvieto to Aiken to prepare two medieval banquets for the community. And the chefs have also prepared annual dinners for members of Partners in Friendship. And a small group from Aiken prepared an American Thanksgiving dinner at the request of the current mayor of the, at the time, three or four years ago. 
for 140 Italians. We had one day to do it during their slow food week, and that was a real challenge. They asked us to come back and do it again, but we thought once was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Following a halt in activities because of COVID, Mayor Osborne contacted the mayor of Orvieto to ask if Orvieto wished to continue the partnership. The response was yes. And student exchanges, as you've already heard, resumed this summer. While she was in Orvieto, Francesca was asked to carry a gift from the community or the municipality of Orvieto to the city of Aiken. And holding that wow. are the four tiles which have been put into a frame, and they represent the coat of arms for the city of Orvieto. I think there used to be a banner in the old municipal building, and I think these same tiles were featured on that banner, if I remember correctly. The cross, the eagle, the lion, and the goose, and they go back hundreds of years. I have read about the meaning, but I won't go into that tonight. Mayor Osborne, we would like for you to come down and accept this gift on behalf of the sure. city of Aiken. I know they need to slide out. I do want to say what a great program. It exposes um, so much international culture um, to our young people and to our town and our city. So we're happy to have that city exchange and excited to get that back off the ground again. So I think it'll be positive for our city. Mayor, could we ask Mary to give us maybe a couple highlights that Claire experienced on this trip? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Well, I when I when she got home, the first thing I asked her was, "What are you were you most excited about?" And she said, "Air conditioning and ice cubes." <laughs> so it was very hot in Orvieto, but I mean, the experiences that she got changed her life, yeah. and so I'm really thankful that that opportunity exists. And we're looking forward to hosting next summer. So, and Thank hopefully, you. I'll bring her to one of these meetings too. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. All right, the second we have is a presentation by the Northside Neighborhoods. Uh, Mr. Beanbow, do you want to introduce Yes, uh, Barbara Williams uh, has worked hard to, um, um, with her Sugar Hill uh, Community Association, Neighborhood Association, um, she did ask to present a new community effort amongst several neighborhoods um, to briefly introduce the efforts that uh, they've been working on. So, uh, Barbara... The floor is yours. Good evening. Good evening. And you all give me with the mask. I prefer to keep it on tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, let me get the paper. Uh-huh. Do you want me to get it? Everyone. Oh. Yeah. Read off from the mask. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Northside residents and supporters of the north side. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Barbara Williams and I live on Aiken's North Side. Tonight, a group of us have 
decided to come together and reintroduce ourselves to the city council, and that's the North Side residents and supporters of the North Side. Our collective purpose as neighborhood groups and supporters is to bring together ideas, views, recommendations, and set goals and action plans that support open communication, collective responsibility, and set goals and action plans in a shared commitment to the well-being and growth of Aiken's neighborhoods. We collaborate on common issues and goals while acknowledging the uniqueness of each neighborhood. This collaboration can bring both progress and challenges from time to time. We appreciate the city's leadership and foresight to allocate a total of $9.6 million in support of growth and development on the north side. And we look forward to continued efforts to provide input and ideas and work with the council and all of Aiken's stakeholders. Progress and growth on the north side of Aiken is progress and growth for all of Aiken. And we thank you for that. Thank you, well said. Okay. Very good. We now move down to the non-agenda items from the public. We open that up at this time for comment. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am, and then I'll, I'll have you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let me just say to the group, we, uh, I personally appreciate your presence, your attendance here. I know you're meeting regularly and having discussions, and you will see the fruits of your dis uh, discussions. Uh, you have several uh, goals. Uh, there are different groups in here. I, I know Eyes on Aiken had a great meeting on this past Saturday. Uh, with great attendance there. So we appreciate your focus, focusing on specific things uh, within the area. Some of them are goals that we can manage right now. Others may come a little bit later. But thank you for attendance. We need to see more of you at, at these meetings because this is your city and you can have tremendous uh, input in terms of what we are doing and the manner in which we expedite it. So thank you again. Here, here. Yes, yes, ma'am, Ms. Barbara, absolutely. There's one other thing I'd like to say. Sometimes um, we gloss over some of the common things. And Leslie, thank you for bringing out the fact that there are other, there, there are collectively a lot of going on with other neighborhoods. But some common things that we've been looking at as neighborhoods, for example, is the infrastructure expansion, street lights that light up some of the dark spots that we have, sidewalks where there may be additional sidewalks, a national chain grocery store, diverse restaurants, community center expansion, public art that enhances awareness and reflects community culture, laundromats, <laughs> okay, uh, abandoned and air properties, for example, and a continued support for small and minority businesses. Those are the common things that we, that we have talked about. Now granted, like I said, there's some unique neighborhood specific things that all the neighborhood groups are talking about, but these are just some of the things that we have in common that we talk about. And some we can do for ourselves, and some we definitely will need city support. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for sharing that. I'd like to say that uh, <coughs> Barbara just moved back to Aiken, um, what, two years ago? In January. She actually um, totally remodeled her childhood home, which is up the street from me, and she hit the ground running. She has been so involved in this neighborhood. She called me one night, she said, I wanna do some things and uh, she's doing it. And thank I just you. thank all of you for um, your dedication and commitment to making this community better than it is. God bless you all. I love you. Very good. Mayor. Um, yes, ma'am. I heard Miss Barbara say sidewalks speaking my language. So um, about two years ago, the Aiken Augusta Transportation Commission, which is uh, uh, led by Mayor Osborne, um, we came into a, an opportunity of grant funding for various projects. And so we met with an engineer, Miss Jennifer, who came and we walked certain areas of the north side, Smith, Hazel, a couple parks, 
and identified you know areas that need sidewalks and I am honored to serve on that commission with Mayor Osbin and Tom Young and we all saw the need and the importance for that so everything is basically signed sealed and delivered and I just confirmed with our city manager that that project just has to get bid out so the funding is available so I look forward to talking more with you guys to keep working in Good project. All right, we're going to open up our non-agenda items. I saw somebody's hand over here. And I pause. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Council, I have some things I would like to hand in. Is that okay? You can give to our city clerk. My name is Mary Camwood Agresta. I live on Ascot Drive in Aiken. I am here this evening because I just became aware of a few errors that I would like to share with you. In the event this comes up again, um, the Planning Commission and the City Council will be aware. Number one, in the zoning ordinance, which I handed in for the City of Aiken, South Carolina, page 84, number four, period three, period eight, period, plan commercial projects. A, Approval of concept plan. There shall be no entitlement. C, area limitations, number one. Minimum size of tract. It states the minimum size of any tract or parcel to be developed for a planned commercial development shall be five acres. I have attached this with the paperwork. So how is it a Lulu's car wash was approved and is currently building, being built on this property? The approved Lulu's car wash was clearly violating several ordinances with restrictions. Since the 2.63 acres on the corner of Stratford Drive and Whiskey Road is less than the required five acres, we expect nothing will be built there. Since Lulu's is being built on 2.71 acres, less than the five acre requirement and violating the PC with conditions. There is no need for a curb cut on Stratford Drive. There, there, they will have a curb cut on Sizemore Circle. What we already knew was the zoning in 2003 that was clearly made with no sunset clause and does not expire as previously stated was zoned planned commercial with conditions. Number one of the conditions was no car wash. Only a concept plan can expire after five years. I have attached that with the paperwork also. In the hopes of preventing this from happening again, the intent is for the Planning Commission to be made aware of these ordinances and violations, as I have stated, and to not approve any more building on the property to then pass it to City Council for approval these conditions from 2003 were made to protect the neighboring three subdivisions. Their safety and well-being were being considered as it should be now. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Jeff Crock. Jeff. 553 Lakeside Drive in Gem Lakes. And uh, thank you all for listening to me. You all have been doing a great job. Uh, my, my concern is Whiskey Road and what is that, uh, Olive Garden. They have a, a right turn and a left turn out of that parking lot there. How long is it going to take? How many accidents are going to happen before they change a no left turn out of there? because it seems like everybody's trying to go as fast as they can to make the light. Nobody understands, you know. And uh, another left turn is out of uh, uh, TJ Maxx, where they cut across to go left down Pine Log. I think there's so many accidents there also. And that's all my comments are. No, good good comments and good observations on, on that also. I don't want to say, is your last name Grot, G-R? K. 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 
Um, I know one of the conversations that's been had is, is a median that would go between where Krispy Kreme and that area is, so it would force the, the um, right only out. But I know that's an issue. Oh, you think they'd jump it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. Maybe so. Yes, yes, ma'am. Hey. Good evening. Lisa Smith. I live in the city of Aiken. Just wanted to mention something about the sidewalks that you were talking about. I understand there's a sidewalk going in that's $250,000, 400 feet of sidewalk going in on uh, Chesterfield. No, on uh, Charleston. By Colleton. That's in my neighborhood. I, I guess that's six hundred and twenty-five yep. dollars per foot. It, it's matter? also inter intersection improvements, like with a crosswalk and uh, uh, features such as that. And I know that is something um, the uh, Saint Noah neighborhood has been uh, working with the city on for, um, gosh, since two thousand sixteen. 2017 uh, something that they've been very interested in for um, safe passageway over to the park that's there at Charleston Street to the park the Saint residents of the every day many times right th this is uh, going back uh, to 2017 um, conversations uh, that we've had with the Saint Noah's neighborhood there St. Noah's? Yes, uh, Barbara Stafford and, and her and the residents, uh, they meet at St. Noah's Church. Um, and again, this is something that they've been uh, very much um, working with the city on um, and, and being very interested in trying to get accomplished. And that is uh, where the genesis of this project has occurred. It's been studied and um, we're just so right appreciative study, that we decided there were no bald eagles and no wood cranes in the area so it was safe i read all the environmental impact studies i just didn't see anything that was had anything to do with the need how many people are actually crossing charleston at colleton you know like i said i live there, so I'm there all the time there are children playing occasionally in the park but the park is so run down it seems like that would have been a better use of the money um, and the traffic we do sometimes have traffic on Charleston when people are cutting through the neighborhoods, um, but not off, not much, and not on Colleton, very, 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 very little. So, where exactly is the sidewalk going? That I couldn't tell from the thick. It will. It will. Because um, there is already an existing sidewalk on most of that street, and then there's the parkway. Uh, the the sidewalk will um, go down a portion of Colleton. Um, there will be uh, intersection improvements in terms of striping, um, and in, into the parkway and over into the park um, is the bulk of where the work is. Um, it's again a project that um, you know the neighborhood association uh, or the neighborhood group has been very interested in. Uh, for a number of years, and we're just delighted that we've got the funding for it. Is there a neighborhood group? I have never heard that we have yeah. a neighborhood group. There is a neighborhood group. I know Councilman Waltz attends uh, a lot of their meetings. Barbara Stafford, St. Noah. Yeah. When, when you took... Hmm? When do they meet? Oh, and I have one more quick question. When are you up for election again? I couldn't figure it out. I sent you an email. Uh, two years. Fifteen. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. Thank you. Twenty-five. Just to clarify, the project I was working, I, I was referring to, is different than that one. Just, just to clarify. It's the other half of it that'll be going from Schofield. Different funding source. Different, different funding source. It looked like there were sidewalks going from Schofield to the park. We that made sense to me. The one I'm referring to, we haven't bid out yet, but it is conducive to the area that. Um, Barbara was talking about. So it's not the scope deal. Mm -mm. So, so for clarity, I'd like to for us to bring something to the meeting, showing where the these where these funds are coming from, yep, and where are they going at the next meeting. I'm going to be with it 
I'm not familiar with it as well. So if, if I'm not familiar with it, I can understand why you're not familiar with it. Yeah, these TAP grants, uh, they've been a long time coming. Uh, there is money allocated through Augusta Regional Transportation Study Committee uh, for this. Several years ago, uh, we were asked to, uh, typically the city of North Augusta and the city of Aiken are the jurisdictions where this funding is eligible. And the uh, several years ago, uh, we had a conversation with the county and with North Augusta that the city of North Augusta was looking for some match money as it relates to the 13th Street Bridge reconstruction. So they asked if we would uh, not apply for funds that year and in exchange the following funding period North Augusta would sit out and thus we received the full allotment of TAP money uh, this go around for those two projects. But yes, we can get that um, to you. It's been a long time uh, coming and been uh, sitting in um, in application status for well over a year. I'm just asking just for an update. That's, it. That's all. Absolutely. Yep. We can get you that information. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Jacob. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Jacob Ellis, Resort Core, Aiken, South Carolina. On the topic of sidewalks, um, the crosswalks between the different streets downtown need to be looked at, especially the one from Security Federal to Plum Pudding on Lawrence Street. You walk, you push the crosswalk button, you cross the street, you get to the little crosswalk with the sidewalk. The middle slab of concrete is this much higher, it looks like, than the other two. And it sort of goes uphill, then downhill. And if it's a tripping hazard for me, I couldn't imagine someone with a walker or wheelchair trying to cross the street. So if that one needs looking at, I can't imagine the others don't need looking at. So that is my topic for today. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Moniak. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Don Moniak. I live north of Aiken. I'm just curious, anybody's familiar with the 1994 report titled Economic Impact of Spending by Aiken County Residents on the City of Aiken? Anybody heard of that back in the mimeograph days? <laughs> <laughs> no, because there is no such study that I have been able to find in the document repository anywhere else. There are studies on the economic impacts of the Hotel Aiken, the equestrian community, and even the Aiken Corporation projects but no studies on the economic impact of spending by county residents within the city. I raise this issue because once again, county residents are being described as outsiders, just like during the hospitality tax debate, when supporters of the tax argued that county residents enjoy the benefits of the city's infrastructure and amenities without paying any of the cost. Of course, this is and was junk, junk economics. But who are these outsiders and alleged freeloaders? Those in the county who within the fire district who are serviced by city water and sewer, but outside city limits. Residents in the Highway 1 corridor that city officials insist is part of the true north side, along with Highway 19. Residents across the county who shop in Aiken or receive healthcare services. I urge you to take a look at the first five pages of the Aiken horse this year month. It's full of multi-million dollar estates, homes, equestrian properties. What impact do these properties and homes have on the city's economy? Excuse me. How much do the workers, construction workers, and landscape workers necessary for this growth spend in Aiken? 
The fact is that county residents do pay for Aiken infrastructure and amenities through their spending. Probably most of the infrastructure and amenities. County taxpayers also subsidize a significant portion of the city's economy simply because Aiken is the county seat of government. It is a sheriff's office, detention center just on the edge of town, the historical museum, library, county administration building, and several other facilities. County outsiders, as they are called, are compelled to visit Aiken to do any personal county business. Something like 75% of the health services in this county are within city limits. This spending contributes to one-third of the city's general fund, which is the unfair business license tax based on gross income and not profit. There are also county residents who have businesses in Aiken and pay business license taxes and collect those. So until there is a study that concludes that Aiken would not shrivel to the size of Barnwell or other smaller towns without county resident spending, it's probably time to quit calling people in the county outsiders and quit pretending that city of Aiken is a island with a lot of coastline trying to grow like a squid to the north. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Oh, and just, just so you know what I was holding, this is an orienteering handbook, 1971 from uh, U.S. Army Infantry School from Fort Benning. I, I tried to draw an analogy and a joke from it, but I just couldn't do it, so thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. Lewis Rinaldini, 638 Magnolia Street. Um, I would just urge you as we go forward in the next few months as council to think carefully about what we are presenting at these meetings. I think, you know, the recent elections show that there was a significant disconnect between the council and the community. And I think those citizens expect a reorientation of what council is thinking and doing. And it's not really a big deal, but it's more sensitivity to certain issues. Uh, so for example, you know, we've worked a bit on the sidewalks issue. I think everybody is terrified that we would get another Williamsburg Street tree massacre if we start bidding out the sidewalk issues. So I think the community is going to want to see those before they get bid out. And in particular, we would like the planning department to be sensitive to those issues ahead of time and try to identify for the sake of the council, for the sake of the citizens, things that might be hot spots so that we can at least identify them, address them. It's not sprung on the community like a surprise. You can try to get a consensus before you get ahead. I think there's lots of reasons why people on North Side would want sidewalks. I don't think people would want an eight-foot sidewalk that just paves everything in sight. Uh, you know, you want to do it with sensitivity. For example, those parkways, uh, the, the part that's in the old grid, that's the oldest his most historic, most important thing about Aiken is the street grid. And if we start doing different things in different areas of the grids with sidewalks done one way in one place and something else in the other place, it starts to lose coherence. And actually from a historic preservation point of view, that's recommended against. So, you know, we've already had discussions that things like sidewalk and community improvement decisions that affect the parkways and the sidewalks should be presented to design review board to make sure that they're consistent with the old historic grid. If they are in the historic grid area, it's less of an issue elsewhere. Uh, but you know, the community is very sensitive about these things at the moment. And I, I think it would be a great way to start you know, getting more uh, unity and cohesion with the council to, to have these discussions ahead of time uh, and uh, bring them out without having a series of things that are just presented for vote with very little information ahead of time and you have to scramble when the agenda gets out to figure out okay what does that mean we don't have a lot of information and then people can come up and get excited uh, you know there's an issue like that in the comprehensive plan uh, we communicated with you this afternoon saying our recommendation is that you should pull that from the agenda continue it to next week because there's elements in there that are very offensive to the community and you'll hear about that later uh, but I just think it behooves everybody to not con to con not to continue to have train wrecks where you know council tries to do something then we have to find ourselves in a situation where we feel we have no choice but to oppose it and to oppose it vigorously if 
we have not have any chance of stopping it. Uh, so thank you. I just sir. urge you to be careful on that grounds. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. We move down to old business at this time. Item number one is the discussion of appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. I recognize Mr. Dean Cook. Uh, there are no uh, appointments before council this evening. All right. Hearing that, I open the floor to council members to make appointments or reappointments at this time to be considered our next public meeting. Okay. We appoint Charles Cummings to the Recreation Commission, and I'd like to reappoint Dr. Stephen Simmons to the Planning Commission. Very good. Any others? I have two, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Well. Councilwoman Price. John Wallace is currently served on, serving on the Recreation Commission, and he's doing an excellent job. I, where is uh, our director? Our, our, she, and she can vouch for that. He's always going around these parks and making recommendations, and I know that Jessica's aware of that. So I'd like to see John Wallace reappointed to that committee. The other one, um, is Leroy Myrick, who has served for, I know, almost a decade and a half on the Community Development Committee. And uh, Leroy has shared with me that he is no longer interested in serving. And uh, it, it was my idea to come up with his son, Scotty Myrick. Scotty is a native of Aiken. He works at Savannah Riverside, and he would be an excellent replacement for his father on that committee. He's constantly uh, looking for things to do to improve um, the community. And he is uh, a young, up and coming, hopefully politician in this town, so. Very good, any others? Reappoint uh, Charity Heffley Lay for the um, um, commission of um, The Code Appeals Committee, Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Sorry, I thought that was a typo, but I'd like to um, renominate her, please. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Those names will be considered at our next meeting. Moving down, old business, item number two. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to rezone an Aiken County Board of Education property on Explorer Trail from residential single family RS10 to planned institutional PI and approve a concept plan. By title and ordinance amending the zone of real estate owned by Aiken County Board of Education from residential single family RS10 to planning institutional PI and to approve a concept plan. Is there a motion? I so move. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Comments from staff? Thank you. The applicant is requesting rezoning and concept plan approval from residential single family RS10 to planned institutional and approval of a concept plan to allow a regional bus parking facility, detention pond, and play field at Aiken Intermediate School, which is located off of Wire Road. It will consist of 77 bus parking spaces with two smaller lots having an additional 67 additional spaces. Some bus parking uh, would be considered as accessory, but would only acquire staff administration approval, administrative approval. But since this is a regional facility serving far more than the needs of the two schools, um, it is deemed a separate principal use, which needs to be addressed through zoning and planned institutional um, is the best fit for that. It does provide locations for schools, churches, and some other institutional uses, which may reflect residential or more restrictive zones or less intensive uses. It does require a concept plan approval by city council um, after planning commission review, which may address site layout, building design, tree protection and buffers, and other issues to assure compatibility with surrounding uses. It is uh, currently developed with Aiken Intermediate and North Aiken Elementary. The bus parking lot is currently a grassed field. 
The new play field will be in a wooden area, wooded area located to the north and east of the school buildings. The concept plan was reviewed by um, the Planning Commission, addresses uh, stormwater management appropriately, as well as vehicle access improvements. All those present at the Planning Commission um, unanimously recommended it to council, which reviewed it at first reading on August 14th. It is before you today for second reading. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beanbow. Any comments from the audience? Comments, questions from council? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the second reading, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to item number three. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to adopt updates to the Comprehensive Land Use and Transportation Plan by Tyler Norris amending the City of Aiken's Comprehensive Land Use and Transportation Plan. Is there a motion? So moved, Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Is there a second? I second. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Dix. Comments from staff? We do have an updated plan. Um, staff uh, has made changes. Um, we do have uh, an update to the public park section, also a section on the Arboretum Trail. Uh, needs some additional verbiage to assess appropriately the citywide scope of our Arboretum Trail. I know I had I've had several good conversations with uh, the cure the founder and. Um, um, Tree Whisperer Bob McCartney on this project. I see Bob's back there um, in the uh, back of the room. Um, because we have a zoning ordinance, we must update our plan every 10 years and do a reevaluation after five years. The uh, We had over a thousand unique comments for this plan through online means as well as pub a number of public meetings um, and we tried and attempted to get a wide demographic uh, um, perspective on this plan a resiliency element has been added to this plan a full update of this plan will be completed in 2027 I know it was brought to my attention today um, that there were on pages 325 through 327, there were several uh, road projects uh, as part of the uh, ARTS, Augusta Regional Transportation Study Committee. Um, ultimately, I, those need to get removed, I believe, from the that plan. It's... Uh, from arts um, and it's represented in the study. Um, one of them calls for expansion of uh, Whiskey Road between South Boundary and uh, around Boardman. Then uh, similar expansion along Powder House um, and also Two Notch uh, through sensitive areas. Um, I know those um, long-term um, or, or long-term uh, in the long-term arts plan, the 2040 plan, but ultimately um, those, I believe, need to be removed um, and should be through the arts, but they are included because I think we're kind of mandated to include the projects that are in those plans. Um, this update to the plan was reviewed by council at, at first reading august 14th and is before council at second reading this evening yeah we we need to remove those from the arts plan that's in there okay. that is correct yeah, yes that's, that's correct. lewis is that is that what you were talking about when you came in i would so that's not something we can remove from the comp plan that actually has to come from long-range transportation right. plan yeah approval. we can we can remove that from arts but um 
that is something I know. Uh, I had a conversation earlier, late around 4.45 today. I tried to reach uh, Mr. Duke, who who is the staff contact for arts, to, to, to start that process. But certainly um, it's... Um, it, it does need to be removed, and, and it has been brought uh, to um, our attention uh, before um, and needs to happen. I, I'd like to suggest we have that conversation before second reading. I agree. I, mean, I, 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 I do want to add the 2050 list is also noted in the appendix of, of, of the comprehensive plan, and I don't know that those are listed on the 2050. I think it is. I, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure we pulled that, but I, yeah, I'd I'm like to get Yeah, I'm fairly certain we pulled those two. I, I, is it, Mari, is there any reason why we couldn't push this, to continue this to the next meeting? Not necessarily, but it would be good to get it done. <laughs> I, know, I know, but um, I, right. I think that's important to answer before we have a vote. So, so the okay. next reading would be on uh, September the 11th. 11th. You want to table it till then? I, I I think I'd like to entertain a motion to table it or to continue. I'll second I'll, it. I'll make that motion. Okay, Mr. I'll Walsh made the motion. motion. They'll have to withdraw Council their motion. Do they not? The second, say, I'm sorry. There's a me. motion already on the floor. You made the motion, so I. I didn't. No, I didn't make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you made the motion. Gail seconded. I seconded. It. Well, okay. So I would be in agreement. Okay, so, yeah. so that, that's fine. Councilman Waltz actually did too. He did too, and I seconded that motion. But right. we still had a motion. I think added. we all in agreement. We all agree. Yes. Count, Councilwoman Gregory made the motion. Councilwoman Diggs seconded the motion uh, to continue this item. Uh, that's not to put it off or to not get input on it, but I think we need to get this clarification before we come, come forward. So um, with that, we have a motion, a second. Any discussion? And then all those for continuing this item. Let me make sure we're in order. So you made a motion to approve as is. No, no, no. I made a motion to table it to the next meeting to continue. so we can amend that area. What was your earlier motion? We, we motioned to discuss it. We're, we're in order. Okay. We're in order, okay. Council. All right. Yeah. Um, there was a motion to approve in a second. Mm -hmm. And then we have a right to look at that and continue with okay. it. Okay. And that's where we're at. So, so again, we have a motion to continue a second. Any discussion? All those in favor to, to continue this to a future meeting, please raise your hand. And that, that's unanimous. Thank you. We will bring that item back with clarity on, on those issues. So, All right, moving down to the agenda, item number four. This is the second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to adjust the 2023-24 budget to include grant funding for the school resource officer at Chucker Creek Elementary School. By title and ordinance amending the budget of the city of Aiken for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. Is there a motion? I so move. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? I second, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Okay. Uh, comments from staff. Thank you. We do have an acceptance of a grant from from the uh, Department of Public Safety, State of South Carolina, their highway safety and justice programs with funding to be used for expenses for the school resource officers at Kennedy and Schofield and for Chucker Creek Elementary for salary benefits and equipment. A portion of this grant in the amount of $174,498 was included in the funding of the budget ending June 30th, 2024. Uh, however, notification of the funding in amount of $172,015 was awarded after our budget was adopted. Therefore, a budget adjustment is necessary to include the funds for revenues and expenses for this portion of the grant. And again, this is for the school resource officer at Shucker Creek, and it is before you for second reading this evening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beanbow. Any comments from the audience? Comments, questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor of the second reading adjustment, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. All right, moving down to new business. I'm number one, first reading of an ordinance to approve commercial building facades at the old Aiken Mall site, now called Aiken Town Park. 
uh, by title and ordinance to approve amendments to the concept plan for property owned by S.C. E. Aiken, LLC. Is there a motion? So moved, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Is there a second? I second. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Comments from staff. The applicant is requesting review of uh, commercial building facades at Aiken Town Park, formerly known as Aiken Mall. Uh, this is required as this was a condition of the April 27, 2020 approval of the redevelopments concept plan. There are requests for two buildings under construction behind Bank of America and Red Lobster. The site plans show them as buildings A and B. They're approximately 5,200 square feet each. Maximum height of 32 feet 11 inches for building A and 30 feet for building B. Buildings would be of brick, fiber, cement, cladding, and a combination of shingle and uh, metal roofing. There would be a west side drive through window at building A. The second pair will be slightly behind, behind and slightly north of two buildings under construction adjacent to Belks. These uh, buildings are shown on the site plan as buildings E and F. Building E, 12,400 square feet. Building F, 11,550 square feet. Maximum height, 26 feet, 4 inches. Made of brick, fiber cement cladding, and aluminum detailing. No elements of the concept plan have been significantly changed since last considered by council. The Planning Commission reviewed this at their August 15th meeting. All present unanimously voted to recommend approval of the facades with the condition the developer provide a rendering that properly reflects the colors of A and B, of buildings A and B. And this is before you at first reading this evening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beanbow. Any comments from the audience? I see Mr. Long is here. It's good to see you this evening. Good to see you too, Mr. Mayor. Council, thank you for um, hearing this tonight. I'm very excited to be here um, with your continued support for the mall, and we're not just talking about knocking an ugly structure down, but we're actually talking about building new structures. So we have four buildings um, that we're very excited. We think they turned out great, very attractive. The one thing that I, I will mention that um, print-offs and computer screens, that the, the colors seem to get a little bit off. The primary colors are, are a white brick and a, and a gray uh, paint, and that is not red, that's brown. It kind of looks reddish to me, too. <laughs> so um, that's, that's really my only comments, but we're, um, we're, we're very happy with it and glad we're talking about vertical buildings. Very good, very good. Long time coming. Yes. The, uh, the park that's included with that is coming along as well. Yes, and so the park, the, the buildings that are up here, those are two buildings. Um, those are larger than the than the other two, um, and the park will sit behind those. So they're really double double sided buildings. So they're not, you know a lot of retail buildings have a really pretty front and then a not so pretty back. Um, but these are double sided buildings, so there'll be patios that can relate to the park um, and make it very interactive back there. Any news about any more prospective? Occupants. I know we've got chicken salad chick and the From tropical, tropical smoothie, smoothie cafe. which are both my favorite. But I'm a big fan of else? those too. Um, so we have on the A and B, B buildings, I do have two other letter of intents, but I don't have signed leases. Those are in, in the process of negotiation. So, okay. the, the, the so you can't tell. I can't say. I'll, I'll, I, I can say there, 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 there are two more restaurants, and uh, so I, I think they'll be good. They're, 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 neither of them are here. Um, so there'd be new, new How many retail do we have? I, th I think we, we do. We're, we're, we think that the park retail, particularly, is, cl is closer to Belk. The thought on those buildings is the end caps, the, uh -huh. you know, so the each the kind of like a barbell. The end caps are built, they're designed for 3,000 square feet with patios on the outside to attract more of a sit down, whereas the front buildings are kind of a fast casual. And then really fill in the, the middle with, um, with retail. And so that's kind of the vision, and um, we're looking and we're making calls and mm -hmm. hoping that um, mm -hmm. we can we can attract the right tenants. So thank you. Very good. Thank you. Just, um, Mr. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Just curious to know uh, the originator of the Aiken Town Park. Um, I, I I think of you know trying to come up with a creative name, but then also you don't want to get 
too too out there. And then you, you look back in a few years and think, why do we name it that? But I think the the the, the real focus of Town Park is because we have a town park. Um, that that was a major factor in mm -hmm. getting this project off the ground is to is to bring that that central park. It's central to the project. It makes people want to stay there longer, and um, that's that was kind of their the vision. You know. Um, so, several years ago if they had the Central Park and so that's why it became Aiken Town Park. Thank you for that information. Yes. So you still have intentions of making the um, family park area? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a and that's a big selling point that we're pitching to the, the tenants and the restaurants that, that um, you know you come and and dine maybe before your your table's ready you can play in the park and then after you can and a Hopefully concert. shop at the retail shops that are right there okay. next door. Concert area? Yes, in the middle, okay. right behind Belk. We have a, a little theater there, yes. Excellent. So we really want to make it a place that people want to stay and, and hang out and not just, um, you know, come in and grab a bag of food and get back in the car. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Comments, questions from council? Okay, hearing none, uh, before us is the first reading of the ordinance to approve this facade. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. I'm number 200 new business. This is a first reading of an ordinance to amend the city budget for fiscal year 2023-24 by title and ordinance to amend the budget of the city of Aiken for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. Before I take a motion, I'm going to recognize uh, Mr. Beaton Bo. Thank you. We have attached a memorandum. Our, we've been uh, the finance director, Ms. Rooks, and I have um, looked at the uh, books that have closed for the fiscal year ending June 30th um, regarding unspent funds. We had a uh, the general fund brought in more revenue than. Uh, we had expenditures of $1,878,104. We had higher than projected uh, tax, business license, and interest revenues. Expenditures were under budget primarily due to equipment that was ordered but not yet received or projects not completed by June 30th, which are noted. Um, departments requested these funds be held over for items or vehicles and equipment on order but not delivered prior to June 30th, and certain minor projects that were not completed during the year. Um, we've got a budget adjustment to update the budget for items um, on order to be paid from prior year funds were available. We recommend, uh, I know council's been very clear as it relates to public safety, that we um, look at the marketplace, try to stay competitive where appropriate, uh, this year, uh, what we looked at was um, um, with the sworn law enforcement portion of public safety, those individuals, um, the, there have been increases. Uh, you, I'm sure, heard in the news the sh uh, at the Sheriff's Department, those uh, deputies received a 15% pay increase um, in order to stay competitive. Uh, we believe within the marketplace for our sworn law enforcement officers, uh, an 8% pay adjustment for all officers through the rank of lieutenant. We would, uh, the ranks of captain and major, 4%. Dispatcher, 16%. Again, in order to stay competitive. Uh, at this time, uh, there is no increase uh, for fire. I know I've gotten, I've heard that, um, you know, that, that has been brought up. Um, again, we were looking at it uh, marketplace only. Um, these are the end of uh, the portion of our city employees that are recommended for increases. Our water and sewer fund finished the year with a surplus of about $3.5 million. Uh, revenues were about 6.7% more than budget. Uh, again, same with uh, we had equipment ordered not yet received projects not completed by june 30th also some bond proceeds for design and engineering uh, more than expenses and
and we have the appropriate budget adjustment listed for water and sewer. Our stormwater revenues were about 95, a little over 94,000 greater than expenses. Same, projects not completed were the reasons for the surplus. Our solid waste fund finished with a surplus of a little over $600,000. With expenses slightly under budget, revenues over budget, um, we are requesting upgrades to uh, fuel software and uh, another um, automated truck. Also, uh, we uh, heard in January from our friends at uh, and partners of the Friends of Hopelands and Rye Patch. We uh, did. Um, we're able to fulfill some items in the budget that was passed in June, but we were not able uh, then to add some employees. But this uh, particular uh, budget would add two full-time staff at Hopelands and Rye Patch. Council was very clear in January we need to try to make this happen. Um, and, and this will help with a showcase amenity um, at our, in our city as well as uh, it was brought to our attention at second reading in June about the gym floor at Smith Hazel. We have 150,000 allocated uh, for that um, uh, because a council viewed that at second reading of the budget in June as a priority. Um, and this is before you today for first reading and consideration, mayor and council. Thank you for that, Mr. Beanbaum. Um, with, with that explanation at this time, I'd look for a motion and a second. I'm going to move for adoption, Mr. Mayor, but I have a couple of questions at that point as well. Okay, so we have a motion. Is there a second? I second. Okay, very good. We have a motion and a second. Um, I'm going to suggest we listen to comments from the audience and then we'll address comments and questions from council. So at this time, I would open up the floor for comments. Yes, ma'am. Charlie, I'll get you next. Good evening. Hello. My name is Dr. Holly Waltz, and I'm the president of the Friends of Hopelands Gardens and Rye Patch. And you're right. Back in January, our long-range planning committee presented a PowerPoint to you all and a request for $275,000 mostly geared to four areas, and one of them was for an additional staff, um, an employee. And I remember very well, as you just said, Mr. Beanball, that you all were surprised because presently we only have one full-time employee for 24 acres. And I'd like to point out that actually Hopelands and Rye Patch is more than just a showcase of um, the city. We're doing a lot of work right now. We are starting, this is our second year of presenting education programs. We have a very large grant and a collaboration that will be starting in October with the University of um, South Carolina Aiken Ruth Patrick Science Education Center of presenting um, education to elementary school children. Uh, quite a few programs there. We're involved with ecology and environment. So I think Aiken absolutely adores you, the city adores a uh, the Hopelands and Rye Patch. So we would really like to have additional staff to help support, maintain, grow, continue these gardens and all of the museums. They are on those properties as well as Rye Patch. So thank you for reconsidering. And also we're pleased, I know she's got a subcommittee working with staff uh, as we are beginning the preparations to talk about the round five of the capital project sales tax um, on some major projects at the gardens that um, monies from potentially 
round five could really make a significant impact on, and we're excited about that as well as the other package of projects we would bring forward um, for, to, for council to look at and get input and add projects um, later this year. Thank you. Charlie. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I'm Charlie Miller. I live at uh, 98 Bridge Creek Trail. And what I wanted to bring up, I, I think it's great that you're considering giving 8% to the line officers and those line lieutenants. Uh, they're, they're overworked as it is. I would recommend that you do add the fire personnel in there, the driver operators and the cadets. A driver operator starts out at $12.99 an hour, which is driving a uh, $750,000 piece of apparatus, going through training and, and operating. They're also doing most of the firefighting because the police officers, they're short staffed as it is. They're short about 12 or 13, and they're primarily doing a lot of the firefighting. I would recommend the cadets who make $8.25 an hour get paid for 14 hours and work 24 because they're considered part-time, and those guys need more. They go to school, but when they're in class, and they get an alarm goes off, they do leave the class, their professors allow them to leave the class, and they do come, they respond. Regards to the captains and the uh, majors and the, you know above the line staff, those guys are in the office, they're not out on the road every day, and that money could be saved. They're not the ones leaving, your shortages are on the line, and you're short right now, uh, you've been short in the fire department at least, uh, uh, two, a couple of drivers for the last year, you're down to short two now and you're getting ready to lose another officer, uh, a fireman. So, and, the, and two of those just went back to the highway patrol. So they're leaving for the more money too. So, so I ask you to consider that. And, and uh, to echo or, or, or add some additional information about the captains and the major, we took into, he's, uh, Mr. Miller is absolutely right in terms of the, the work. They do important work, but it is um, they uh, to avoid salary compression, which is also something we have to be very mindful of. The Their raise is a little less, but they did. Um, we felt like we needed to address that to prevent salary compression, which is a real issue if we're not careful. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. And I will say too, as it relates to, um, I want to say in my in conversations uh, I've had um, regarding this matter, the for the fire, uh, it certainly, um, I mean, we value um, uh, those individuals. Uh, certainly, not recommending the pay. It was simply a case of I have a fiduciary. Um, responsibility I believe um, and certainly we can produce some numbers on what uh, what the impact on that would be but um, again I'm addressing where we potentially could um, lose employees uh, to other jurisdictions due to um, due to again um, pay and we can certainly run those numbers uh, to, to see what the impact would be if council so desires um, before second and, and have it in a packet uh, for second reading or before second reading uh, for consideration. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beanbow. Any other comments? Okay. I know there are some comments and questions from council, so I'm going to open the floor. I think Leslie asked first. I'll go behind Leslie. No, go ahead. Okay. I, I just have one. Um, I see you um, allocated $150,000 for Smith Hazel Jim Floyd. Is that enough? If we we believe on that, or we just no, we believe. That's what it'll take. Yeah, we believe that uh, will be sufficient. We're trying to. What we're waiting on is the final engineering report for uh, the project um, to address the issues that were raised at the June 13th meeting. But yes, um, in terms of a hold and with, with other funds already budgeted, we believe um, this would address the, um, the highest cost option should that be 
needed. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Councilwoman Price. I was a bit confused with the Smith Hazel. That's the basketball court where the grant is coming. That's for the outdoor, that's the outdoor court. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, my question deals with, and I, I've got some folks in the audience that would want to know this answer too, and it relates to the chief. I've bugged them enough regarding cameras. Is this in the um, $5,755 allocation? Which, um, is this on what, what page number, if you don't mind me? No, I'm sorry, it says franchise fee. I just wonder, where, oh. where are the cameras for the... Oh, the Kennedy Colony. Though, those cameras were put in the budget you passed in June. For You're talking about the cameras for Kennedy okay. Colony. Those, we've already got those funded, and we're out getting the pricing um, to, to get those installed. So they are, there is the Kennedy Colony camera system is in the budget that you passed in June. Okay. This is just additional unspent items and additional things that have come forward. It said carry forward, and some of these were in the June um, yes. finalization. I just wondered whether it was... Yes, ma'am. Uh, but the Co Kennedy Colony, uh, that's funded, and they're in the process of getting pricing and uh, to get those scheduled for installation. Um, only want to add that I appreciate your having the dates that these are finalized. And as we move, I know this is, I'm giving somebody more work than uh, what they should ask for, but it helps to have these dates as we approach, uh, as we move along. If we can get dates on when these are finalized, that would be very helpful to know what we've completed uh, with the adjustments that's been made. Absolutely. I know. Um, uh, the chief and I have talked when those get installed, we'll let, um, let everyone know. All right, very so good. Stuart, one other question. Yes, ma'am. When I look at the 5 million and what was the other, I'm sorry, the 3 million and the almost 2 million, uh, I'm, we're coming up with 500 over $5 million that uh, we're making an adjustment. With. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And of course, some money is going to be put in our special holding and, and depreciation accounts, for example, for the public safety building because repairs over time will be needed. The This building, other city assets. So, yes, um, I think um, this is a product of, you know, good uh, budgeting direction from council and um, certainly factors out of our control like uh, while the economy is slowing down um, our revenues that we took in were better than we anticipated and uh, this is the byproduct of that okay. thank you mr Bimbo, I, I would be interested i don't know that we can do anything this go but i would be interested to know what what those numbers look like as far as the the amount of employees in the fire side yep we can I'd like to at least do due diligence on, on absolutely that. what what we'll do uh if it's okay with the council is look to see what the impact would be with an eight percent for uh the fire the driver operators and cadets and bring that number back uh, to council at second reading. Uh, certainly, at first reading, what you're passing is what's before you, but it is always within council's purview to amend um, at second reading if they so, to, if if council so chooses and desires. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, Councilwoman Gregory. Thank you. Three three things. Um, I'm going to uh, resonate what Mayor just said. I, I'd, I'd like to see that too. I, Charlie spoke a little bit on the fire safety side, the turnover. What what is our what does our turnover look like on the fire safety side? I would I don't I would have to research and get back with you on an answer. Uh, but I suspect what Charlie said is probably the case that we have, um, you know, some turnover because again um, the folks uh, will follow and, and go where they can make the most money and I get it but also uh, some continue to work the post because it fits in with with what their other uh, 
other uh, duties and, and obligations they have um, outside of the workplace. But we'll get that turnover info. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Stuart, because, um, again, we have to remember that it costs us a significant amount of money to have to rehire and you know train and everything in between is a very costly um, aspect of turnover and I, I know you mentioned that you know we we are basing that on the market um, and it's true and and it, I want to specifically congratulate the city of Aiken staff because we are very fiscally healthy and strong and that's all to the efforts of of our staff and, and we need to pinpoint that but with that said we want to base it on market, but we really need to base these decisions on across the board in this department. Um, we have to base it on loyalty, dedication, and, and, and a fair approach. And so I, with that being said, there is concern um, for this decision out there. I've gotten a lot of feedback in the last couple days, so I trust you guys will bring us the right information so we can really make a uh, well-informed decision on, on these pay increases. That's one. Um, Smith Hazel, I am. Uh, I see here one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that gym floor. You know, Smith Hazel needs so much more, and I, and I know I always resonate this, but what else can we look at at Smith Hazel that can drive improvement because. I mean, there's just parts of Smith Hazel that that we really need to redo. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep pushing that. I, I think if we can push more funding towards Smith Hazel, we can really blow up that particular park. We all yep. Know uh, in the courts coming. I'm gonna have Ms. Lawton. More basketball courts. We've got. Tell me, tell me, yes, tell me, because I just of stuff. that hundred and fifty thousand dollars to me is just not enough. Right. So um, Joy did a fantastic job before she left of getting us some additional grant funds so that we could better leverage our CPST dollars and make that money go even further. And so you've got two projects currently in design, exterior, um, two new basketball courts. So outside, o outside, exterior, two new basketball. Tell courts. me about inside. Tell me about the building. Okay. Well, there's a lot going we on. We got a outside. great pool. We're going to have basketball courts. Eventually, we'll have sidewalks. Tell me about yep. the inside and of that And then building. inside, uh, we have a, a grant from the Department of Aging to make the facility ADA accessible. So mm -hmm. um, we're addressing, and then at your direction, at Council's direction, we added the gym floor restrooms um, in addition to that, the, the grant-funded and CPST-funded scope of the lobby restrooms. Um, the the all of the programming space on that side of the building um, will is any, anywhere that the public enters we're addressing accessibility so all of the doorways are being widened um, but it, the big thing that we hear a lot about is restrooms um, so those have been reconfigured to have true ADA stalls and we're doing that in the the gym floor restrooms as well now um, Reception desk will be made ADA accessible. Some of the office space is being reconfigured so that we can have more programming space in the building. So um, we'll get those here, the, those designs as they're being finalized to you, council, so that you can give final pass before we put the project out for bid. But um, we're working uh, interior and exterior. We're coming up to the finish line here on having designs finalized making sure everything we do in terms of procurement is in compliance with all of those state um, standards. It's not, since we have this extra money, there are extra requirements that we have to comply with. But um, yeah, uh, upgrades inside and out. Um, re upgrades to the playground with the turf. Yes. Um, tennis courts, additional um, basketball courts. Yes. Um, we talked about playground, pickleball, pickleball four yes. new courts for pickleball. So all of these mm -hmm. will be added to Smith Hazel Recreation Center. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So it, it's over a million dollars in, in investment in addition to but the, that's everything. the basketball court, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. or the interior basketball court. And that is being looked at 
Um, so all of the hard floors throughout the city rec facilities, city PRT staff is, is working on doing a bid to get those floors replaced if needed. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, Jessica's team has verified that the floor is structurally sound. It is oh, salvageable. Good. I mean, it, it is playable. If you want the dead spots addressed, then the entire floor will have to be redone. So that that will we're gathering information, and that will be a decision point for um, Stewart and, and you council when, to make. When do you guys foresee Smith Hazel to really be um, fully? Re, re, no, I don't want to say fully redone because no park is fully redone, but well, we, or the I, million dollars has been applied and it. We've got grant deadlines coming mid 2024, so the work will definitely be done um, by end of calendar year 2024, well before. But we'll be conservative and say it, it's coming soon. Like I said, we're we're almost ready to bid out. We definitely don't want to bid out until you've seen and um, sure. given your stamp of approval on the the plans. But that's where we are. Mr. Mayor, I have a question, a yes, comment. Right now, I see the urgency with not having um, restroom facilities as handicap accept accessible. Uh, I know that uh, Councilman Diggs just received a concern with a handicapped person that went in and it wasn't acceptable. That is critical right now yes. uh, for that to be accessible to our, not only guests, but our citizens who are paying taxes. So if we can get to that pretty quickly yes that is uh, that all of that interior work um, like I said originally the scope the grant funded scope just included the lobby area and the programming mm -hmm. space and those the restrooms off of the lobby but at your direction here within the last few months I can't remember which council meeting mm -hmm. that was um, y'all decided you you gave the direction that you wanted to a, expand that interior scope to include the restrooms off of the gym so we have done that and um, the architect has now, that's what's kind of delayed bidding out. He's had to go back and add, do some additional design and have his electrical and um, other, uh, his engineering team work out the logistics for how exactly we make, because you know it's a very confined space. I mean, we've got a limited footprint, so we're trying to do a lot with within the footprint that we have and um, not take away storage for tables and chairs and still have office space for the staff who are housed there so there's been a little finagling but I, I think I hope everyone will be happy with the plans and um, as we get this finished set we will do a, a display in Smith Hazel so that the community can um, take a look and, right. and reach out if they have yeah questions or concerns. One other question uh, Mary Catherine um, will there be any changes to the facade or any plans no for no exterior the, o the only thing um, that we had discussed was some changes to the windows um, I'll have to go back and look at at the most recent scope that our architect has done to see if that's still included but we're not touching any of the finishes outside you're welcome all right thank you Mary I, had, I had three thank items you. sorry the last one is mentioned cameras um, where we, I know that Jessica mentioned CPSP funding being used for that at Odell East I mean I think it's also needed at Smith Hazel and the various different parks so where, where, yep. where are we with that as far as um, funding to get that funding? well with uh, with the cameras at Odell weeks we have CPST I think uh, we're working on pricing as it relates to all the parks um, I know kind of a back of the napkin I was quoted was approximately a million dollars but um, again they're working on getting that fine-tuned uh, if you wanted to put them in at all the parks but um, no no um, this would be at all of the parks it would be about a mil approximately a million dollars uh, but um, again we're trying to get a better number and uh, we hope to have that very soon thank you Stuart appreciate Mr. Vera. Yes, ma'am. I'm smiling um, because I've revisited this over and over with Stuart, yes. so I'm reluctant about bringing it up again. But as we talked about turnover um, with, with Councilwoman Gregory, 
I know we don't um, speak of it enough as relate as it relates to our employees who are, if I can use the term, at the bottom, and what we start out with as minimum wage. We know what inflation is bringing, and we have. If we don't have anyone working at fifteen dollars an hour, they, it's hard. It's tough to make it, especially with inflation going on. And I know I heard at the last meeting, let's see if we do that at fifteen dollars an hour, we'll have to increase everybody's pay, and that may be at a million dollars or more. Well, that is not too much, as I look at people really, really stretching it, trying to make ends meet. And as we approach 2024, let's really work on trying to see if we can make those adjustments. I agreed. And yes, it is a, it is a tremendous amount of money. Uh, you're right with all the competing priorities, uh, because again, we do look at compression. But um, again, we're like uh, we mentioned during the work session, in addition to what was presented earlier, trying to come up with some other um, options and ideas for council that um, that would have a positive impact to employees pocketbooks, but mi uh, minimize an effect on our um, on our expenditures and bottom line. All right. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll go back to our first reading of, an ord of this ordinance. All those, in, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, that's unanimous. And we will look for some information before second reading. All right, we're moving down to petitions and requests. Item number one, this is approval of a resolution to provide water and sanitary sewer services to Shaw Industry Group located off Columbia Highway North near I-20 by title of resolution authorizing the provision of water and sanitary sewer utility services to property located at 136 East Frontage Road. Is there a motion? I so move. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Thank you, Councilman Price. Comments from staff. Thank you. Shaw Industries has expend has they have applied for expanded water and sanitary sewer services uh, due to a four hundred million dollar plan expansion that they announced in November twenty twenty one. The uh, the planning commission heard this at their August fifteenth meeting, unanimously recommended council approval with the following conditions for sanitary sewer service and expanded water service. That the agreement on the provision of city services be recorded within 90 days of approval by the council at the RMC office. There be a condition to annex the property as soon as it's contiguous. The city engineer approve the design of the water and sanitary sewer system. Site and landscape plan complies with our tree ordinance. Uh, tree preservation and landscaping regulations. The site and landscape plan comply with our open space and buffer requirements. Any new sign be a monument sign no larger than 40 square feet or a, or a maximum of 10 feet in height and that the project comply with the city of Aiken sign requirements and that any ingress egress drive receive encroachment permit approval from DOT. And this is before you under a resolution for consideration in, um, this evening. All right, thank you, Mr. Peenbaum. Any comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Jacob Ellis, Three Short Court, Aiken, South Carolina. Um, I have no issue with us factoring in Shaw Industries into our city sewer and water, especially with the investment they've made in Aiken. My question concerns who will be footing the bill to tie in Shaw Industries into our city sewer and water? Because that can't be cheap. And since that is the north side of Aiken, I hope the money, if, the, if it's the city spending the money, I hope it does not come from the Plutonium Settlement Fund. Because $8 million is 
Oh, just a little bit and not enough, in my opinion, for the north side. And I hope that us tying in the sewer to Shaw Industries doesn't come from that fund. It, it did not. So how much will it be costing the city to tie in? Well, actually, the city's not tying in. It's Shaw Industries that's so tying in. the city will have system. no uh, the, cost to the city? The, there was um, the Shaw Industries with their expansion had to, uh, with the State Department of Commerce, put together a package uh, that requires them to have to pay for um, this expansion. Um, I'm, I will have to defer to the engineering director in terms of what city obligations were for this. Um, I don't, I mean, this is typically a project like this would be borne by the, in this case, the industry. Yep. So it, there is no, this is being borne by Shaw Industries. I'm sure they got state aid given the amount of investment and the number of jobs, but uh, that would be something more to, uh, on Shaw Industries okay. end. I was just wondering if the city was putting up any of the money for it, but you no, we are Thank not. You. No. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacob. Any other comments? Okay. Comments, questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to item number two, this is the acceptance of a grant from the Federal Highway Administration for Safe Streets and Roads for All. I title a resolution authorizing the City of Aiken to accept a grant from the United States Department of Transportation Safe Streets and Roads for All program for the City of Aiken Safety Action Plan. Is there a motion? No. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Price. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you, Councilman Waltz. Comments from staff. We have received a grant from the Federal Highway Administration for two hundred thousand dollars. We uh, have match money in the current budget as well as some funds in CPST2 to develop a safety action plan, which will make us that these having this plan makes us eligible for more funds for multimodal forms of transportation, including sidewalks, bicycle lanes, uh, and other. Uh, traffic safety improvements, uh, but this is for consideration with the council. Um, I know the planning department and our traffic engineer worked hard to procure this grant or to uh, obtain this grant. So hats off to them for their hard work. All right, very good. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Comments or questions from council? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, how much money is left in the CPST2? Yeah, make happen. It's uh, it's under two hundred thousand dollars. Most of it's left in the bike lane, uh, CPST bike lane. Uh, yep. So. All right. Any other Thank you. any other comments questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of this item, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to item number three under petitions and requests. This is an approval of a resolution accepting a grant from the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for a basketball court at Smith Hazel Recreation Center. By title, a resolution authorizing the city of Aiken to accept a grant from the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for a basketball court at Smith Hazel Park. Is there a motion? I so move. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Price. Comments from staff? We have applied for and received a grant from the State Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for this outdoor court construction, $29,865. Our match is seventy-four sixty-six. It will be combined with other grant funds and CPST4 funds, as we discussed earlier, to complete multiple exterior improvements and this is uh, requires the resolution from council to accept the grant all right thank you sir any comments from the audience yes ma'am yep. um, you mentioned pickleball and I think I nodded my head yes pickleball is in the phase plan for Smith Hazel but it is not phase one so it's not in this current scope of work. 
it's related to Smith Hazel. Sorry, it's not. No, thank you for that clarification. Any other comments? Okay. Comments, questions from council? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of this resolution, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to item number four, this is an approval of a resolution to accept the deed of dedication for water lines and sanitary sewer lines and related equipment in East Tennessee University Lane townhomes from S7 Enterprises, LLC, by title of resolution authorizing the acceptance of a deed of dedication from S7 Enterprises, LLC. Is there a motion? So moved, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Is there a second? Yes, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman. We do Gregory. have the request. Oh, staff. oh, thank you. The request to accept the deed of dedication for water, sanitary sewer, and other related equipment uh, in University Lane townhomes. And our engineering staff has reviewed and recommends approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beedenbo. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Comments, questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor of this resolution, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. All right, we move down to the non-agenda items from the public, uh, where each speaker can address council about city issues. They have three minutes, and so we open it up at this time. Thank you. All right, any issues and updates or information? I do not have anything at this time, Mr. Mayor, um, but we do have to go back into executive session. Very good. So council will go back into executive session. Um, we have an update, we'll come out. Uh, the only thing that will be voted on is that time to adjourn. So with that, um, I would look for, do I need to read this? Okay. okay. We'll go back into executive session to receive a legal briefing on the Blake v. City of Aiken lawsuit. Is there a motion? All right, Councilwoman Diggs, thank you. Is there a second? Yeah, it's seconded. Okay. Councilwoman Waltz. All those in favor, raise your hand. I second it. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. And that's unanimous. So we will be back out just to adjourn. We're going to get this update. I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you guys for being here for our meeting. And, um,
Okay. All right, we're back. At this time, I would entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So I move, Mr. Mayor, that we. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Price. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. All those in favor of coming out of executive session, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. This time, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So move. Councilwoman Price made the motion. Is there a second? All right, Councilwoman Diggs may a second. All those in favor, please stand up. We're adjourned.